Good morning, Kevin here. And where am I today? Well, certainly you can see Steve's with me. I am. And Cynthia's with me. Hello. And we are at Waverley Abbey in near Farnham in Surrey. And we're standing alongside this absolutely lovely lake. Let me just show you what we can see. And away in the distance there, we'll be seeing those in just a minute as we walk closer past them, is the swans and they've got, we've got drakes on here. And just over there underneath the willow tree is a coot. So let's start having a wander along here. But one thing that we have noticed already is the amount of people that are here walking their dogs or just out for a walk with their friends um, and, and some people with some very elaborate looking um, camera equipment. Just in the distance behind the trees is uh, Waverley Abbey House. But we can see all the birds that are swimming away and are ducking away. And I've, I've seen a couple of fish jump out of the water, probably carp. But I suppose there could be all sorts in here, pike and perch. But today, it's, it's a nice temperature. A little bit of a breeze and fairly overcast. But we've been planning, this is a route that, or walk that we've been planning to do for some time now. Um, but it's a, one, one of many walks that we want to do. So we're just going to press on. But away in the distance there, you've got a lovely bridge which crosses across the part of this lake. We've just walked along a little bit further and the bridge that I mentioned just now is just in front of us but I think it's all closed off so you can't actually get onto it. But this is a better view of um, Waverley Abbey House just away across there, the lovely looking lawns. We've got loads of water lilies all across here, which seem to be almost taken over the, the lake around here. We've just come into the gates of Waverley Abbey. And as you can see, we've got that there. We've got a notice board over here that tells you more about the history of the place. Well, it's the rise and fall of Waverley Abbey, actually. So let me just show you that. But the ruins of Waverley Abbey are situated in a loop of the River Way and was the first Cistercian house in Britain. I think I've got that name wrong, but there you go. <laughs> it was founded by William Gifford, Bishop of Winchester, in 1128. It started with 12 monks and an abbot from France. By 1187, there were 70 monks and 120 lay brothers in residence. In 1201, the abbey was badly flooded, which became a common occurrence as, as a result, it was substantially rebuilt during the 13th century. And here we are, some of the ruins right alongside me now. And if I show you through there, you can see a bit more of it, which we'll get to in a little while. But there are a lot of people about here today. It continued to grow and in the 14th century. They framed the surrounding land, produced wool and provided shelter for pilgrims and travellers and an infirmary for the sick. In 1536, with the dissolution of, dissolution of the monasteries, the site passed to Sir William Fitzherbert, treasurer of the king's household. 
Much of the abbey was dismantled and some of the stone was used to rebuild Sir William Moore's house at Lowesley, a few miles to the east. So now we're unfortunately got the, the, the workers here um, cutting the grass, which is a shame, or the footpaths, but you can never have it perfect. Well, I've just come down this lovely cut footpath, which has just been done, and we're now at the side of the river. Unfortunately, you can't see much of the river because of the way all the trees are hanging over. But this is just beautiful, stunning stonework. I think, I think most of it looks like ironstone to me. lovely arch windows with the, the stone mullions and you can see where it's, they've all been eaten away by the wind and the rain but sadly at some point of course you know and this is, is this is sorted out this will all be gone it'll just collapse at some point let me just take you for a walk around here so you can get a view of this, this, this here. I think this was a chapel. But just look at these beautiful buttercups all through here and clover. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely, lovely flowers. And you can see in positions of the, the tops of the, the walls where they've got, it's like a guttering that's where the water would come running out of. Because at the side here, you've got this huge buttress just here. And more arches all the way around. You can see on the right hand side of the wall the arch of the brick of the stonework where the obviously you could tell where the, the, the wall used to run further out. And you've got the inset there which was possibly an old fireplace or an old um, doorway going through there. Just show you the end of the wall so you can see how thick the walls are. So what we're looking at, three and a half, four feet thick the walls here. And it goes down to the foundations. Let me just take you inside. And you can see the lovely stone arches that go through here. As you can see, probably see from some of the, the footage that some of the ceilings have been patched up over time. But it is just beautiful. An old fireplace there with the stonework, the stone mullions all the way round. Just incredible how you know we're going back to the 1100s 1200s when this was built but again you can see how thick the stonework and that is and it's there's lots of bits of flint all packed into the old masonry that they used and from just down here you can see which would have been the floor above just there, amazing, absolutely stunning. And the fact that we're able to still look at these old ruins, obviously not intact because of the, the way that the, um, the building has deteriorated over time, but the fact that you can see the thickness of the walls
face of this end wall and I don't know whether I'm facing south I think or no because it's no east perhaps I've just got this wall here with these old windows and it's stonework all the way up with the, again all the big stone mullions and when you stand at the base of these walls it's just so daunting but you've got to marvel at the way that these were built you know, all those years ago. Just amazing. We've got Steve and Cynthia here. Steve's, Steve's looking at his notes, which he's been passing to me at times. We've got Cynthia there taking more photographs. And they said to me just now that they found some some dragon's teeth. Yeah, it's um, World War II defences. Ah, right, OK. Yeah, I know what you mean. The pointy things, okay. or no, blunted points, if that's what it is. Oh yes, here we are, all the way along here. Wow, look at these. And right underneath this beech tree, which is right at the side of the river, oh, there's quite a number of them. Looks as if there's about 20, 25. And they've got the loops here, which I'm assuming that was used for lifting these things because they're huge. The weight would be colossal. But yeah. I mean, you can see on the beech tree where people have been coming along and carving their names into the bark of the tree. I remember doing that when I was a boy. Dragon's teeth. I think, um, oh yes, yeah, absolutely, Steve, yeah. More, more of the defences across the river. Perhaps we were expecting the invasion of the Germans down this river, were we? Yes. <laughs> you can imagine their, their floating craft coming down the river and trying to get ashore here. But I don't think they would have done, not with all these here. Cynthia hates being in the films. But this is lovely. Well, well spotted, Steve. It was on the map. Oh, it was all <laughs> <all> right. <laughs> I thought this was something that Steve had just, Steve had just come across himself, but no. <laughs> oh, hey, what a letdown. Well, I'm at a, the edge of the monk's dormitory, which is this behind me here and on the wall we've got monks dormitory you are standing inside a once very long range of buildings which ran out from the east side of the cloister part of the range must have served as the monks dormitory the single story arrangement was unusual since monastic dormitories were almost always a first floor level and as I said just now, unfortunately, we've got the guys going around cutting the grass. And I'm just hoping it's not going to affect the audio too much. Because he is literally about 25, 30 feet behind me. So as he gets closer, I'm raising my voice a little bit more. And it's just a shame that this is happening today when we've been waiting to come over here for so long. But I'm at the east end of the the dormitory now with these lovely lovely windows from the inside you saw them from the outside just now but these are all from the inside and you can see that again the depth the depth of the of the windows that were here the the, the, the stonework and the flints in, inserted all the and this iron stone all in, in amongst these absolutely incredible Well, just when he didn't want to start anything. I think the, I think the guy is deliberately following us round. Because everywhere we go, he goes. There he is. Just outside there, look. So I'm in this part of the building now. It's got the, going through this, well, it's a tunnel, really. 
Stephen and I were saying just now about the way that this stonework is just held up in place. It's just amazing. You can see the different type of stones and the textures on all this, these surfaces. You've got this big lump of stone here. Just come round here, Steve's dropped all his notes, I better pick them up. Oops. It looks to me as if part of the these walls here has obviously been something there which has formed an archway. Oh, I just put my foot in a big hole. And you come round here, and going through this bit. It's probably an old doorway or a window or something. And now we're at the end of this this part of the building. Now this this wall here is even thicker than the other ones I saw. And you can see where something was on this line that comes all the way down here. Bit of luck, I'll be able to find out. Oh, Steve's just seen a plaque on the wall, which is good. So I'll be able to tell you what this part of the building is. Go down through here. This, again, this was obviously something inset into the wall there. Oh, here we go. The, sa the south transept. You are standing in one of the two great cross arms of the 13th century Abbey Church. It was amongst the last parts of the building to be completed. In this wall are the remains of three tall lancet windows. Their lowest stage is built solid to allow for the cloister roof outside. And these are the three windows, one there, one there, and one just there. So I think that's pretty much all the, the trip round Waverley Abbey. We've got a big old oak tree there. We saw a tree just now where one of the bells or one of the sections of the tree had, had, had fallen and actually cracked. But they've put a, a wire cable from the main trunk of the tree and put in what they call a tie, um, um, a, a hook. It's with a threaded bottom and it's screwed right into the bow of the tree and then a, the wire cable was passed through that. Um, and that's holding the tree in place. We've got the, the outside walls of the abbey here, just coming round with the backdrop of the tree, of the fields and Waverley Abbey House. But just over here, we've got this magnificent tree, which I'm, I don't know whether it's a yew tree or not, I think it possibly is. But when you look at the base of the tree, it's absolutely incredible. You can just imagine this is a, a group of, the way I immediately saw this was a mixture of people laying here with arms spread out all over the place. But this is just incredible. This is definitely an old yew tree. But just underneath here, just about to step on this, is one of the walls of the old abbey. So that actually passes directly underneath oh, the tree. And as you can see just here, comes out to this point here. So the tree has grown up out of part of the abbey. But just over here, there's a plaque that Cynthia's standing looking at, telling us, I'm assuming, about the tree. Oh, about the abbey church. Of the Abbey Church, most of the site of the high 
I also looking forward to Nave in the distance. So this would have, I'm yeah. guessing this would have been a church here then. So it was huge. It was a very big church. If that's if that's right. So this this would be the south transept. North transept. Yeah, that'd be that wall. Yeah. Well, that is correct because that shows us exactly where we are yeah. in relation to where the building was. So yeah, it stretched out that way. Or would it have been slightly more that way? I'm not sure. Well, it takes in the whole thing, doesn't it? It's, it's all of that. It's all of this, yeah. It's it would have been an absolutely massive building, a church. And this great building replaces a smaller church of the Abbey's early years work on the new church was was begun in 1203 under the direction of Master William of Broadwater. So that would have been an absolutely, yeah, absolutely huge, huge church. So I think we've almost finished our walk around as it, as it, it goes on. It just goes on. It's such a shame. I do apologise about the noise of the mowers and things like that but you know there's nothing we can do about that so we're going to head off now we're going to do a, a we're going to do another walk um today and the, and the date is what today 28 28 28th of may so this will be kevin cynthia and steve saying bye bye and we'll see you on the next one bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Hello, this is Kevin. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, follow, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and that would be great. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.